there is a word. In the book of Matthew. Chapter 5. Verse 8. Blessed. Happy. Watched over. Protected. Are the pure in heart. For they, only the pure in heart, shall see God. Divine formula for happiness. Be seated. You who are familiar with the Bible, can you remember when Israel was in the wilderness? Moses was sort of growing weary with the burden of leading God's people. So he asked God to show himself. Father, show yourself to me, is what Moses said. God refused, but God qualified his refusal. In so many words, he said, Moses, if I show you myself, you would die. But I'm going to accommodate your request. God set Moses in a crack in the rock. And God put his hand over the top of the crack. And then God said, now I'm going to pass by. And after I have passed, I'm going to remove my hand. And you will get to see the backside of God. What an experience that must have been. We can only imagine what Moses saw. Now, thousands of years later, Jesus comes along and says to an unhappy searching multitude that they can see God. 
God said to Moses, you cannot see me. Jesus comes along and says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. God said no. Jesus said yes. Now, that's a problem. But I don't intend to solve the problem today. Today, I'm going to deal with the business of being pure in heart. And then the next time I stand before you, I'm going to try to get you to understand the seemingly contradiction. The Father said, nobody can see me and live. And Jesus said, there's a group that can the pure in heart. He didn't say maybe. He didn't say might. He said shall see God. Now the first three Beatitudes were concerned with our need, our consciousness of need, such as poor in spirit, mourning because of our sinfulness, meek as the result of a true understanding of nature of self and that terrible thing that ruins all of life. Then comes the great statement of the satisfaction of the need having realized that we need, we hunger and thirst after righteousness. And then comes the wonderful answer that they shall be filled. And when we take a look at being filled, we realize that that causes mercifulness. And mercifulness will bring about purity in heart. And purity in heart brings about peacemaking. And after that comes persecution for righteousness sake. We got a whole lot to unravel here. So let's begin with the heart. The gospel of Jesus Christ is concerned with the heart. We are told to keep the heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. If I understand the Bible, and I believe I do, the Bible and the gospel and the New Testament has more to do with the heart than the action. The Bible is not so much after action as it is after heart. Because when you get the heart right, the actions are right. So the emphasis is placed upon the heart, not the head. Mm, mm. Do you know that this means that the Bible does not commend intellectual, the educated, the rich, the famous, the exalted, but upon the heart. You can have a high intellect and a mechanical interest in the word of God 
So that merely to be a student of the Bible does not mean all is well. Just because you can recite all 66 books from the front to the back and from the back to the front, that doesn't mean you are well with God. Now just because you can look good on Sunday morning and put a Bible under your arm and know all the hymns and can quote some scriptures does not mean you're right with God. Jesus said to a group of Pharisees one day, you got the scripture woven into your headbands. You got scripture on the cuff of your robes. You got scripture on the hem of the robe. He said, you claim to obey God, but when I look inside, I see a whitewashed tomb. And then he said, you pay a lot of attention to small things, but you omit the weightier matters of the law, love of God and love of nature. Pure in heart. Now what's meant by heart? Certainly not that valentine shape organ that beats within us. The heart is the seat of the affections and the emotions. The heart It's the center of being and personality. The heart is the fount of which everything else comes. The heart includes the mind. It includes the will. The heart is the total person that that is the thing that Jesus emphasizes. Blessed are the pure in heart. The heart is always the seat of all our troubles. Jesus said, out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts, murderers, adulterers, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, blasphemies. The terrible fallacy of the last 100 years has been to think that our troubles are environmental. In other words, to make us better people. Build a beautiful neighborhood and put the old people in the beautiful neighborhood and the beautiful neighborhood makes the old people better. Well, if you've been paying attention to society, We've already proved that wrong. Shepherd Square proved it. When you take a person and put them in a different environment, you put the same person in a new situation. But changing situations and addresses will not change a person. But if you can get the heart, come on, come on, come on. We're talking about laws for guns. But if you take my gun, I'll pack a knife. And if you take my knife, I'll find me another weapon. But if you can change my heart, yeah, change my heart, and I'll lay down my own guns and my knives and everything else. The heart. Education does not make a good man. Listen to me. And we should be educated. You can be highly intellectually educated and excessively rich and be utterly wicked. 
You can be the best person on the block and the worst person at the same time. But it's in the heart. One meaning is that the word pure means without hypocrisy. It means single. Later on, Jesus talks about if the eye be single. What's he talking about, Brother Duncan? He's talking about if you see an image one time on the scene. Now make that plain. Your eye is single. All you see is one scene at a time. But if the eye is not single, you see two scenes at the same time. What's the word, Brother Duncan? Cross eye. <laughs> if the eye is single, when I look over there, I see one Julia. Single, nothing else. But if the eye is not single, when I look over there, Julia, I see two Julias. The pure in heart means <laughs> just one God. The pure in heart means there's nothing else in there. The pure in heart means to love God with heart, soul, mind, and all that is within you. Blessed are the pure in heart. Now the text said that the pure in heart shall see God. Now let me scratch my head. Now Jesus told the truth. He said the poor in spirit Theirs is the kingdom of God. Did he tell the truth? He said, they that mourn shall be comforted. Did he tell the truth? He said, the meek shall inherit the earth. Did he tell the truth? He said, the thirsty and the hungry shall be filled. Did he tell the truth? He said, the merciful shall obtain mercy. Did he tell the truth? Now Jesus is saying that the pure in heart shall see God. Is he telling the truth? God said, you can't see me and live. The Bible says no man has seen God at any time. But Jesus stands up and says, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. My, 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 my. My, my, my. Nobody can see God at any time. But Jesus said, and Jesus is the truth. And the Bible doesn't contradict itself. God was right when he said no man can see God and Jesus is right when he said the pure in heart shall see God but how does it all work out? How can God be telling the truth and Jesus telling the truth at the same time? Well, brothers and sisters, I've said all I'm gonna say about it this morning. Oh no, oh no, the next time I stand here, 
I'm going to tell you how it is that you cannot see God. And yet, the pure in heart shall, see what? Shall see God. You want to know how? Come back the next time I stand here. Mm-hmm. Doors of the church open. Whosoever will may come. I often say, nothing's in your way but you. Jesus said, whosoever cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Whenever the gospel is preached, the Spirit of God touches the heart of individuals. And encourages you to come. But the devil is like the bird that comes along and picks up the seed before it has time to germinate. Don't put off such an important decision. Listen to the good voice that's saying to you, come, come right now. He said, if you're thirsty and hungry, you shall be satisfied. Is there one Just stand up. That's the hard part. Once you stand up, the rest is easy. Take advantage of the goodness of God. The door is still open. right now.
is still open 